You are looking live at Launchpad 6 at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where it is just past 5 a.m. on Friday morning in the frigid pre-dawn hours. In your view, a Soyuz 2.1A rocket, fully fueled, ready to lift off 24 minutes from now to send the Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft without a crew on board on a two-day journey to link up to the International Space Station. Soyuz MS-23 is the replacement vehicle for the Soyuz spacecraft that was damaged last December, losing its cooling capability, rendering it available only for emergency purposes. Good evening, everyone, from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center, where the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is on duty, led by Flight Director Brandon Lloyd, working with their counterparts at Mission Control outside Moscow, standing by for the launch of the new Soyuz spacecraft. This is the video of the coolant leak emanating from the radiator pipe on the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft that occurred on the night of December 14th, most likely due to external forces, according to Roscosmos, as two Expedition 68 cosmonauts were preparing to begin a spacewalk. The MS-22 spacecraft is docked to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the International Space Station. Roscosmos engineers and officials working with the International Space Station partnership determined that Soyuz MS-22 would only be used to return crew members to Earth in the event of an emergency evacuation of the station with cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin on board. They launched on this vehicle last September along with their NASA crewmate Frank Rubio. In the event of an emergency, Rubio would be required to return to Earth aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon Endurance, also docked to the International Outpost. Soyuz MS-23, the new Soyuz awaiting launch, will be the nominal ride home for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin later this year. Once the uncrewed Soyuz MS-23 reaches the station on Saturday night for an automated docking to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the station, the three crew members will prepare the damaged Soyuz MS-22 for an undocking late next month and an uncrewed parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan for post-flight analysis by engineers. That Poisk docking port for the replacement Soyuz opened up last Friday night when the uncrewed Progress 82 cargo ship undocked following its own coolant leak six days earlier, a coolant leak similar to that incurred by the Soyuz. The Progress was deorbited last Saturday and burned up harmlessly over the Pacific Ocean, setting the stage for tonight's launch. Countdown clocks are ticking backward, now 21 minutes, 8 seconds until the liftoff of the Soyuz MS-23. Rather than carrying three crew members to orbit, the uncrewed Soyuz spacecraft is loaded instead with 946 pounds of logistics and supplies for the Expedition 68 crew. And again, this replacement vehicle will be the ride home for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin later this year. On board the International Space Station at this hour, the seven crew members comprising the Expedition 68 crew are asleep at the time of launch the uh, International Space Station will be flying 260 statute miles over the South Atlantic. Extensive engineering tests of the new Soyuz were conducted by specialists in Baikonur. Yesterday, the ISS mission management team met and gave its final approval to proceed with tonight's launch. To punctuate the criticality of this launch, in attendance in Baikonur this evening are NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Spaceflight, Kathy Leaders, and the ISS Program Manager, Joel Montalbano. The three-stage uh, Soyuz booster was fueled several hours ago. Everything is proceeding on track for launch. The launch time is 6.24 and 29 seconds p.m. Central Time, 7.24.29 Eastern Time, which is 5.24 and 29 seconds a.m. Baikonur Time on Friday morning. Once uh, the Soyuz lifts off, the uh, milestones uh, will be as, follow, as follows. Uh, the first stage separation of the three stages of the uh, Soyuz booster is scheduled to occur at the 1 minute 58 second mark into the flight, followed about 36 seconds later by the jettisoning of the launch shroud, and then uh, the second stage shutdown of its engines at the 4 minute 37 second mark into the flight. 
Second stage separation occurs 11 seconds later. The third stage engines will uh, continue to propel the Soyuz uphill to its preliminary orbit with uh, third stage shutdown and initial orbital insertion occurring at the 8 minute 46 second mark into the flight. Following that, three seconds later, Soyuz separation from that third stage. That will activate what is called Program 4, the deployment of appendages, meaning the solar arrays and navigation antennas, and the Soyuz will be on its way. Again, this is a 34-orbit, two-day journey to reach the International Space Station. At that point, the chase will be on. Automated docking to the Poisk module is scheduled for Saturday night at 7.01 p.m. Central Time, 8.01 p.m. Eastern Time. We're inside the uh, 18 and a half minute mark until launch. Again, uh, you're looking uh, at a view of the uh, Soyuz uh, booster, the 2.1A booster on uh, launch pad 6, site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The uh, gantry arms uh, were retracted about uh, 20 minutes ago and uh, the vehicle uh, is on autonomous power at this hour. After careful preparations, uh, the uh, Soyuz uh, was mated uh, to uh, the uh, Soyuz booster. The Soyuz spacecraft itself was mated to the Soyuz booster uh, earlier this week and rolled out uh, to the launch pad where technicians uh, working in uh, very frigid temperatures uh, hooked up uh, data lines and fuel lines uh, to the uh, rocket uh, for final pre-launch testing. Everything has gone by the book as uh, the Soyuz awaits its liftoff. Again, no crew on board. This will be the ride home for Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin later this year. Some of the countdown milestones uh, that will be coming up shortly at the T-minus seven minute mark, a launch key will be inserted in the launch bunker, a real key that transitions the launch sequence into its final automatic mode. At the T-minus five and a half minute mark, there'll be a final check of the range down in Baikonur to make sure that the uh, range is clear, no constraints, and that the Soyuz rocket is ready to begin its journey. Even though there's no crew on board, Onboard systems will be switched uh, to what is called onboard control with cockpit displays uh, being activated on board uh, the Soyuz. And again, in place of uh, the typical uh, three member crew, uh, we have 946 pounds of supplies and logistics for the Expedition 68 crew on board the International Space Station. At about the uh, three minute 45 second mark uh, into the count, uh, the uh, fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines will be purged with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. And about 45 seconds after that, uh, the boosters uh, will be pressurized uh, for flight, optimizing the flow of fuel and adding structural support to the rocket. Coming up on the 15 and a half minute mark in the count, everything proceeding on track at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. It uh, will be a busy time on board the International Space Station uh, with uh, tonight's launch, of course, and uh, the automated docking of this replacement Soyuz vehicle to the station scheduled for Saturday night. A little over 24 hours after that is the scheduled launch of the uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon Endeavor from uh, launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center to carry uh, for new crew members to the complex, led by uh, Dragon Commander Steve Bowen of NASA, along with Woody Hoberg, Sultan Al Nayadi of the United Arab Emirates, and uh, Andrei Fedyaev, Russian cosmonaut from uh, Roscosmos. Temperatures uh, in Baikonur right now, 25 degrees Fahrenheit, very light winds, 
and mostly clear skies for the uh, beginning of the uh, two-day trip by the Soyuz vehicle and automated docking planned uh, for the Soyuz to the Poisk module on the uh, space-facing side of the complex. You can see uh, just to the left side of the uh, Soyuz booster, there uh, are umbilical towers, two of them that are buttressed up against the side of the vehicle at the T-minus 35 second mark in the count. Uh, the first of the two umbilicals uh, will retract. The second umbilical will separate or retract from the side of the booster at about the T-minus 15 second mark. That will initiate uh, the engine start for the first stage engines on the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Inside 13 minutes until launch, everything uh, continues uh, to proceed uh, in flawless fashion in the count. There is actually a 10 second launch window available for Soyuz launches, although uh, the way the countdowns are typically structured, uh, those uh, launches occur right on the dot. And again, launch time this evening, 6.24 and 29 seconds p.m. Central Time. Once uh, the replacement Soyuz uh, docks to the International Space Station, the uh, three crew members who will ride at home, Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin, will transfer their Soyuz seat liners. Prokopiev and Patelin will move his Soyuz seat liner from the damaged Soyuz MS-22 over to the new Soyuz MS-23, and Frank Rubio, who temporarily moved his Soyuz seat liner over to the Crew Dragon uh, Endurance, which is docked to the International Space Station, will uh, similarly move his Soyuz seat liner over to the new Soyuz. The International Space Station is currently uh, traveling over the southern tip of South America, about to begin a southwest to northeasterly track in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. The Soyuz booster, of course, will launch and then arc out uh, to the northeast over the Central Asian desert, uh, heading uh, for its uh, preliminary orbit with uh, spacecraft separation scheduled eight minutes and 49 seconds after launch. coming up on the T-minus 10-minute mark.
After the uh, Soyuz vehicle reaches its uh, preliminary or orbit, there'll be a series of what are known as DV burns, delta velocity burns, of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft's uh, engine that will uh, initially raise the orbit of the uh, Soyuz vehicle to match that of the International Space Station and to uh, slowly, incrementally close the gap between itself and the station, setting up uh, what is called uh, the automated rendezvous sequence on Saturday, leading to the uh, autonomous docking of this vehicle to the Poisk module. Again, docking on Saturday night, scheduled at 7.01 p.m. Central Time, 8.01 p.m. Eastern Time, will be on the air live with that coverage as well. Coming up on the eight-minute mark until launch. T-minus eight minutes and counting. T minus seven minutes, 15 seconds until launch. Coming up on the point uh, where the launch key is inserted in the launch bunker, transitioning the launch sequencer into automatic mode. The launch uh, taking place a little more than two hours before sunrise on Friday morning in the Central Asian Desert. And there's a view uh, inside the uh, descent module, the crew cabin of the Soyuz MS-23. Normally you would see three crew members strapped into those seats. And there's a zero-G indicator that uh, will be the ride home for Procopia, Patellan, and Rubio later this year. The uh, Soyuz, uh, you can see right above uh, the zero-G indicator, uh, that is cargo, 946 pounds of cargo replacing uh, the presence of the crew members. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds until launch. The range is clear at Baikonur. Coming up on the four and a half minute mark until launch. Onboard systems uh, will be switched to what is called onboard control and uh, recorders are being activated. T 
T-minus four minutes and counting. Very smooth countdown so far. The uh, first stage uh, of the booster is being replenished with fuel. That ground propellant feed will be terminated uh, about a minute and a half before launch. T minus three minutes and counting, just a few seconds away from booster tank pressurization. And the uh, tanks have now been pressurized. Once again, uh, this optimizes the flow of fuel and adds structural support to the rocket as it sits on the pad. T minus two minutes and counting till the launch of the uncrewed Soyuz MS-23. One minute, 30 seconds until launch. The uh, ground propellant feed now being terminated. T-minus one minute, auto sequence start initiated. Thirty five seconds until launch. There's the retraction of the first umbilical tower. The second umbilical uh, will retract in just a few seconds, initiating the engine sequence start. And engine sequence start has begun. Engine ignition confirmed. The engine's throttling up. Now at full throttle, turbo pumps at flight speed and liftoff. A new ride back to Earth for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin takes aim on the International Space Station. Twenty seconds into the flight, roll program confirmed. Engines are reported to be operating normally from the blockhouse at Baikonur. 38 seconds into the flight. The Soyuz arcing out to the northeast. Good structural stability on the vehicle.
pressure in the tanks reported to be nominal. We're coming up on the one minute mark into the flight. Passing through maximum dynamic pressure. Flight reported to be going by the book, one minute, 20 seconds into the flight. All structural parameters are reported to be normal. The engines are performing as planned. First stage separation is planned about 20 seconds from now. Standing by for first stage separation. And we've had escape tower jettison and first stage separation. The Soyuz uh, traveling 4,500 miles an hour, 29 miles in altitude, 29 miles downrange. Coming up on the two and a half minute mark into the flight. Mark, two minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. About six and a half minutes to go. And we've had launch shroud jettison. This view now from uh, a television camera on the upper stage of the uh, Soyuz booster. Coming up on the three minute mark into the flight. Less than six minutes of powered flight remaining. The rocket reported to be stable. Good second stage performance. Liftoff time was confirmed at uh, 6.24 and 29 seconds p.m. Central Time, 5.24 and 29 seconds a.m. Baikonur Time on Friday morning. Three minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. The flight continues to go very smoothly. Five minutes of powered flight remaining. Four minutes into the flight, the Soyuz traveling 7,400 miles an hour, 81 miles in altitude, 190 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Roll, pitch, and yaw reported to be normal. Good structural parameters, good engine performance. Coming up on uh, second stage separation. Second stage separation confirmed. Third stage engine up and running. Five minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. Three minutes and 40 seconds of powered flight remaining. Five and a half minutes into the flight. The uh, Soyuz now traveling just over 10,000 miles an hour, 106 miles in altitude, almost 400 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Three minutes of powered flight remaining. All structural parameters continue uh, to perform as planned, as is the third stage engine.
roll pitch and yaw all confirmed to be normal. Good engine performance. Coming up on the six and a half minute mark into the flight. Less than uh, two and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. Coming up on seven minutes into the flight. Mark seven minutes, one minute, 48 seconds of powered flight remaining. So I use now traveling some 13,000 miles an hour, 122 miles in altitude. The vehicle reported to be stable. All parameters are good. Engine performance is by the book. Seven minutes, 48 seconds into the flight, one minute of powered flight remaining. Eight minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. Once again, a good engine performance, good structural stability on the spacecraft. Now eight and a half minutes into the flight, less than 30 seconds until third stage separation. Standing by for third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Onboard computers uh, now will uh, command uh, the deployment of the appendages, the uh, solar arrays, and you can see them begin to unfurl Navigational antennas will be deployed as well. And we now have confirmation that all appendages have been deployed, the solar arrays deploying as planned, as are all the navigational antennas, a nominal ascent for the uncrewed Soyuz MS-23, a perfect ride to orbit for the vehicle that will bring home Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin later this year. And uh, there's our first view from the uh, external crosshead engineering camera on the uh, Soyuz MS-23. This uh, camera will come into play uh, with the, uh, all the navigational antenna during the rendezvous, final approach and docking, the automated docking that this spacecraft will conduct on Saturday night as it uh, links up to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the International Space Station.
So once again, uh, the uncrewed uh, Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft atop the Soyuz 2.1A booster lifted off on time from Site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan at uh, 6, 24 and 29 seconds p.m. Central Time, which was 5, 24 and 29 seconds a.m. Baikonur time on Friday morning. It took uh, just under nine minutes for the uh, three-stage uh, Soyuz booster to do its job. Everything was perfect all the way up with spacecraft separation coming at the eight minute, 49 second mark into the flight, followed seconds later by the deployment of the Soyuz's solar arrays and its navigational antennas. At this point, uh, the uh, Soyuz vehicle will conduct a series of DV or delta velocity burns of its engine to raise its orbit to match that of the International Space Station and to close the gap between itself and the outpost, setting up uh, an automated approach and docking to the Poisk module of the International Space Station on Saturday night. So with that, uh, we'll wrap up our coverage with uh, a programming note. Uh, we'll be back on the air on Saturday night for rendezvous and docking of the Soyuz MS-23 with our coverage beginning at 6.15 p.m. Central Time, 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Docking is scheduled at 7.01 p.m. Central, 8.01 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll see you back here on Saturday night. In the meantime, that wraps up our coverage for this evening. A perfect launch for the MS-23, the new Soyuz, the replacement Soyuz, on its way to the International Space Station. This is Mission Control Houston.